Hey friends, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'd like to give you an introduction to the new update in February 2024, which allows Power BI native visuals to get started with IBCS charts. They're not perfect yet, of course, but we can get started with the new updates. So let's get into that. To get started, of course, we need some data first, and I'm using a demo data set here, which you also have in one of the courses. And what I want to do is I want to compare my total sales with uh, the total sales of last year. But it could also be any other kind of measure. It's just an example. And I already have my total sales in here, which is this measure. I already calculated that, which is just an iterator over my orders table, the selling price multiplied by the amount. And I also have the total sales last year already calculated. And if I go in here, you can see it's just a date add, so a time intelligence function, which uses, in this case, a dates table and jumps back one year. That's all we have. So these two measures, and now we want to compare over time uh, what's the difference and on, also want to highlight this using this IBCS standard. So to do this, let me go in here and now let's first start visualizing this. So let me just go to my dates table in here and I'm using my date uh, here, this hierarchy. And then of course I would like to have this as a bar chart. So let me check to bar or column chart. And then let's take the total sales and let's also take the total sales last year. Okay. So now we have, oh, let me check them. Okay, okay, now we have them. Okay, so far so good. Now, of course, um, this uh, on a yearly level is a little bit uh, too broad. So let me just drill in, go level in the hierarchy, and maybe also can one more. So go to the monthly level. Now, of course, we have a lot of clutter in here because we have simply, uh, well, certain months, okay, where we show the uh, last year sales, but there are no total sales for this specific period. And they also we have here uh, total sales, but we have no last year. So we cannot compare this. So let's just filter those out. Quite simple, let's go to the filter section here and say for the total sales, go in here and just choose in this case, is not blank and apply this filter. And you see that now we filter this out and we do the same for the last year. So we go in here and say a total sales last year also in this case is not blank and then say apply. So we also have here really periods where we can compare the two, okay? That's what we want. Now, of course, so that is fine. Let me just make it maybe a little bit bigger like this one here. Okay, so we fill the screen and then also make this smaller, so we have this. Okay, now we have our two bars, and now we want to compare them. So to do this, uh, we first can play around now with the new settings, but before this, let me just check the x-axis here, go in here, and say for, this is fine, this is fine, uh, short titles only, this is also fine for the values, uh, minimum height, okay, you can concatenate the labels you want, you go in here, you see that now they concatenate, it's up to you what you want to do this or not. Let me just also get rid of the quarter, in this case, I think it's not required, this is totally fine like that. Okay, so now we have uh, the chart itself. Let's go uh, down a little bit and then we can go into the column section. Let me just go in here and you see they're under columns in here. Now the new options allow us here to use space between categories and also space between series and we have the option to overlap these two things. So this is new and you make sure that when you go there to the column section that you choose all series because if you choose one of the measures like total sales for instance, you'll see that this is not available. So it really depends on whether you select here all or something and depending on your selection, then you see different kinds of formatting options. This is also true for other uh, parts of this formatting window. But now let's go with all and then let's just play around these settings here. Let's say for the space between categories, let's go with uh, 48. And then let's say for the space between series, let's go with 20 in here. And now one more thing, we need to say we want to overlap the bars. So click on overlap, turn this on. And now you see we have some overlap in here between the last year and the uh, total sales. So the specific year. However, the last year sales are currently in front. So it depends on whether you want this or not. But if not, just drag the total sales below the last year like this one in here because then you would see that uh, in this case now the total sales uh, are the blue one, so the dark blue, and now they are in front, right? And the last year is in, in the back. It depends on whether you want to show it like this or not, but you can easily do this by simply dragging and dropping around the fields inside the y-axis. Okay, so far so good. Now we have this. Now we need to create two additional measures which allow us then to highlight the difference between, in this case, the top of the sales and the top of the prior year sales and do, of course, the same if the prior year sales, for instance, like here, um, or also let's check that. Oh, this is the only period. I'm not sure. It looks like the only period, but uh, where's the difference, right? Where the last year sales is higher than the current year sales. So because we want to have this in two different colors, we need to create two measures, but they are actually quite similar. 
So let's do that. Let's go right click here and select new measure. And then let's say in this case, this is uh, the delta uh, underscore red, okay, like this is equal to, and then say, simply use an if condition here, if the, in this case, the total sales, total sales, uh, total sales, in this case, minus the, so the difference, the total sales last year, sales last year, in this case, if this is greater than zero, or in this case, smaller than zero, it's red, uh, then of course, we would like to see the total sales last year, that is that calculation, let's close this, and we should be good to go. Let me go to a new line, shift enter, so have it like that. So simply a difference between those two, if it's negative, so we have actually higher sales last year than total sales in this specific period, then we would like to see the total sales last year. That's it. So let's just save this, that's delta red. And now let's also go inside the measures table one more time and create a new measure, go in here. And now let's create the delta green, delta green. Of course you can name this whatever you like. And as I said before, you can also use any kind of measure. It doesn't have to be total sales and total sales last year. Equal to, and now again, kind of similar. So if in this case, again, the difference, uh, the total sales, total sales, sales like this, uh, minus in this case, the total sales last year. So this one here, if this in this case is a greater than zero, then we would like to see the total sales. In this case like that. Close this and press enter. So the reason why we do two of them is because this allows us to color them differently. That's the reason. So now next for, I need to go inside the, again, formatting section here. And in here I need to go to the, the error bar section, this one here. Now for the error bars, we can now specify two error bars depending on the series. And for the last year, we'd like to use the green ones. So let's go in here. Let's set them to enabled. And then now we need to add a field. And this is where we set the upper bounds in this case, our as our uh, green label, so data green. Let's drag this inside to up bound in here, drop it, and you already see that now we have here a little bar which goes from the um, top of the last year sales up to the top of the current year sales. So exactly the difference. So now we have this, and of course we would like to color this. So we go and see it here and say for the color, uh, let's say this is green. So let me click on the green, and then of course we can play around with the width. So we can make this bigger here. And let's say here, try it like this, make sure that the marker size, I mean, you can leave it in here. You can also make it bigger. You see it's currently a line on top. It's up to you whether you want to keep it. You can also get rid of it. If you just say, I don't want to see this, click on none, right? Then it's gone. It's up to you. Also for the border, I would like to go with no border. So I'd like to uh, remove the border here, set it to zero pixels. And then I'll go on, uh, you can play around with the width, make sure that maybe it's exactly and uh, fits exactly like this one in here. So this is, uh, again, a kind of, uh, you need to try it out, what works for you. Uh, if this is not fine, if you want to have more space in between those bars, you can see that we've done this with the 48 and 20. I would encourage you to play around with these settings to have the bars closer or, um, or more overlapping or less overlapping, right? And also, of course, had an effect where exactly this bar here is placed. So uh, now we have this, the green bar here. Of course, let's just make C, okay. Yeah, in this case, we would need at, less, at least a width of 10 uh, to have it exactly on the bar size. But again, this can change depending on what you set up here for these two. Okay, now we have it for the last year sales. Next, we need to do the same, but of course, for the total sales. And this would be uh, the point, or that would be the point, if we have less sales. So if the last year period was better. So then we also need to enable the error bars. But this time we go with the, in this case, the delta red and drag this to the upper bound, drop it there. And you see that now this is here. It also, I uh, know here, it's now it's here, it's green. It's really, really close, so you can't see it exactly, but here it is red. So then we go inside here, also do the same exact. Now, of course, you need to choose any kind of color. I'm going with this orange now because it's available, but you can also use a red color if you want, right? So we have this, and then we do exactly the same. Let's say for the width, also try out something like a 10, for instance. So it looks like a bubble here, kind of. Uh, it's really small. Let's get rid of this one here, click on none. And then let's also go in here for the border size and remove this so we don't have a white border. And you can hopefully see, even though it's small, that now we have here where the difference is, in this case, negative, we have this little uh, bar up here, right? This one is green, by the way, just in case you can't see it. And uh, this is basically it. So uh, this is the new feature, uh, the overlapping of charts. And of course, in combination with the error bars, allows us to create this kind of uh, IBCS chart. Now, of course, I know there's 
way more uh, options and so on and for all the IVCS charts which are out there. But this gives us uh, with native visuals the option to really come close to what uh, this kind of standard or charting standard is. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Please give it a try yourself and I really hope you can use it. If you enjoyed the video, then uh, thanks a lot and uh, hopefully you also enjoyed the course and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.